Hey fam, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So not so long ago, I released the video about why you really should be waiting and not getting married in your 20s. Now that wasn't the title, I'm paraphrasing. But <laughs> this video, I will definitely talk about why you should wait 30 plus to get married, the benefits of waiting. I have nine tips. We're going to do it right after this. See ya. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming back. So the previous video, I will definitely link it down in the description box below. And at some point, it will be floating up here around one of those eyes. So today's video, I want to address why you should really wait 30 plus and beyond to get married. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing to think about is that you are definitely much more emotionally stable, at least most of us. In our 30s plus, you are more emotionally stable. You know exactly who you are for the most point. You know what you like. You know what you don't like. You know that you are cool with just hanging out with yourself because you love you. You're not worried about all of these things that used to get you upset. So you have the experience to know where you at emotionally. The second thing to consider is that you can handle conflict a bit more mature. Lee. So all of that cussing, fussing, yelling, screaming, maybe even putting your hands on the person usually is gone in that stage because you have now seen because you have dated and your relationships have not worked out and you seen, you know what, you needed to change some of your immature behaviors in order to get to that more mature state in order to have a healthier, more mature relationship. So you can handle conflict resolution much better 30s and beyond. The third thing to consider is that hmm, the opposite of your 20s, now you are more financially stable. No, you might not be exactly where you want to be, but you're definitely more financially stable in your 30s and beyond. You're much further in your career as well, which means you're making more moolah. The fourth thing to consider is that now you have grown as an adult and you know exactly who you are as this grown adult versus the young child who was trying to figure it all out in your 20s. And you can choose a better, you can choose a partner that much better because you already are able to weed out and see what was going on, who's actually going to work with your life, the phase that you are actually in in your life, the goals that you are trying to attain in your life, you'll be able to better choose a partner that is going to help you um, move towards your goals and even help you push yourself to get over some of your fears so you can reach and attain the next goal in your life. So you could choose another. You you you'll choose your partner better because you've been there, done that. You know a little bit about relationships and the things that are required in that relationship, and so you can get past all of the people that don't mean you no good. The fifth thing to consider is that after you have partied your heart out in your twenties and maybe even some of your thirties as well, right? But you have already partied. You have been there, done that. You might even be sick and tired of it. And now you can appreciate the quiet night in, whether you are having a social in your home or you're just having a Netflix and chill with yourself. You appreciate those quiet times now. You don't need to be surrounded by everybody and their mama and all of this loud music popping in your ear, messing up your hearing. Okay, I done went too far. Okay, I'm going to move on. Another thing to consider is that a lot of people like to throw destination weddings. And if you have a destination wedding 30 plus and beyond, most of the time your friends can actually travel and go to that destination wedding. If you choose to have a destination wedding. Now, if you don't, then that's one thing, right? Moving on. But if you do, you can you can definitely know that more of your friends and family will be there instead of just two, three people. 
The seventh thing to consider is that you have a better sense of who you actually are. You don't have to pretend to be somebody else. You don't have to pretend to like certain things, whether it's a different concert or a different band, you know, whatever it is out there. You can simply say, nope, I'm not into this. And you can move on from that. You have a better sense of what you like and what you want to be around and who you want to be around and who you want to be around you too. The eighth thing, you understand that making yourself is a priority and it's healthy to do. A lot of times in our 20s, we want we want to be liked by everybody and we want everybody to be our friend and in our company and come over and hang out and oh, woe was me. They didn't invite me to go to this party and in your 30s and beyond. You're so over it. Like so many people are pretending and you understand that making yourself a priority to say no, saying no is healthy. That everything about it is healthy. That you're only going to choose to go and to be around certain people if you want to. And if you decide, you know what, I wanted to go, but now I changed my mind. You don't have to feel guilty about that. It's like, well, I did want to come, but now I don't. I changed my mind. I'm allowed to. Again, you have a better sense of who you actually are, but you also understand that making yourself what you need in the moment is healthy and you have to prioritize yourself. The ninth and final thing to consider is that in your 30s plus when you're thinking about marriage, you know that marriage is a lifetime thing. It is a very serious commitment and you don't want to just choose anybody to marry just for the sake of saying I got married. Hey y'all look at my ring. Ooh, girl we about to get married honey. It's serious. It's more serious than that and a lot of people try to downplay it and you don't have to downplay it if you just slow down and choose better. Because the person is going to be there. The person that's for you is going to be there. I wish, you know, somebody would have told me to slow down in my 20s and not get married so early. And not just say, don't get married, because what does that make you do? If there is no why behind the don't get married, then I'm going to get married, which is actually what happened to me. I was told not to get married in my 20s, but there was no real meat behind it. Why? 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 It was just like, now you shouldn't get married in your 20s. Oh, I'm moving on with life and we have a dinner. So if there would have been a lot more teaching so I can understand it, I am a very practical person. I can listen up. I can take some notes. I can understand some things. But, but if you're just telling me, that's just like, you know, you're telling the kids not to touch the stove. Don't touch the stove. Don't touch the stove. Unfortunately, until that child gets burnt, they don't understand not to touch the stove. They don't understand why it's so important for them not to touch the stove. So that's just like relationships and especially marriage. Especially if you are trying to just run away from all of the problems that you were having. You don't realize that you're taking them into your relationship. You cannot get married just to run away from some of your family issues. If you're not ready, don't. Do it. And many of us are just not ready in our 20s to do it. Again, is this across the board? Of course not. But by and large, most people are not emotionally stable enough, financially stable enough, spiritually stable enough to take on such a responsibility at such an early age. And you feel like you are missing out on so many things, which is why... Not 100%, but that is why you get with or hear a lot of people, and I have to say most of the time it's the men, where you feel like you're missing out on experiencing other women. Because maybe this was your very first girlfriend, you've only been with her, but your eyes are wandering across the board because you really wanted to taste her and her and her and her, but you didn't. And now you got married. And now you feel that you must cheat 
because you wanted to experience some of those things. So instead of having to go through all of that emotional baggage that you're going to bring, all the heartache and pain, just slow it down. If you need to take a break, take a break. If you never go back to that person, that's fine too. But try your very best to not be part of the statistic. As I preach here on my channel, here at I Love Me, 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 I'm supplying you guys with all of the tips and tools in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships so we, the community, can decrease that divorce rate while simultaneously increasing the marriage rate. Absolutely give me thumbs up if you love this video. Of course, the previous video that I talked about, I will definitely link that down in the comment section below. Excuse me, in the description box below. I will see you guys in another video. Deuces.